over the hill. Yeah, trench line there starts off the fight. Impacts over the front line, but the burst goes through on River. They drop him, and Core JJ is going to follow up engage. There's the Mega Inferno bomb damage on the two, and Sniper has to get away. Thanks to the Steric's gauge. Meech goes in a killing spree, and he flies into the back line for the assassination. A double kill on Yon, and Core still trying to get away. Sniper kills him, and Meech escapes off to the next. Yeah. I can maybe chase. Oh, Meech. Go down, me, go, me. Bottom, 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 the jaws are closing in, they find Quinn, and they're on to him already. Quinn is down, he's been shut down. But in goes River, Crescent Guard Poppy trying to take down Yon. Can't quite do it. Sniper's on the run. 100 Thieves are drunk. I'm going to go. Penta, 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 Okay, we're gonna play on the flesh. You got to win it all. Yeah, he's gonna win. He can't. 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 He not done. Not done yet, right? Yeah. Not done yet. Sorry, guys. Man. Sorry, my bad. I just threw one game. <laughs> this series, you had to lock in a little bit, so a little bit of trash talk, and then next series we'll ramp it up. Grass. <laughs> 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 what? That was yesterday. Camera. That was yesterday. Yeah. That is true. You said out of context, it makes no sense. I thought it was super logical. Anyway, Dokla, okay. welcome to the show, man. Good to be here. Woo! Yeah, welcome back. Uh, what have you been up to the last week? Uh, just been taking care of my health, honestly. Just uh, gymming, trying to just eat healthy and uh, take care of my uh, health. So um, no oopsies happened before my LCS match. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you have planned before the next split of LCS starts up? Just uh, playing league, get back to the grind. You know, spring doesn't really matter. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's one of a little bit of a wash. But um, no, obviously, uh, I have to level up for uh, summer. And I'm um, just excited to see how uh, whoever represents us at MSI, how they perform. Because, um, yeah, go in A. All right, good stuff. Mm -hmm. We saw some highlights from yesterday, but we're going to run a quick little recap as ourselves. What did you take from the series yesterday, Doka? Uh, top lane, it doesn't matter if you get soul killed or not. That's what I learned from this one. <laughs> yeah? <'Cause laughs> if you so just learned. pick a tank, you're gonna be more useful. <laughs> but um, I learned that Teal is a very bloody team compared to what they actually played in like the regular season. So um, yeah, a lot of action in this series. I thought like a lot of like unforced fights as well, but um, yeah, it's, it's entertaining to watch. One thing that people kept saying was that TL are a lot more like this in scrims. Like there were two disparate scrim rumors which, about 100 Thieves and TL. Did you encounter this TL in scrims with NRG? Yeah, we, we did encounter this variation of Team Liquid. <laughs> and we also encountered the 100 Thieves variation. Um, unfortunately, they didn't show up on stage like that for us. But um, uh, yeah, I think the scrim rumors, you can put some stock into it. Actually, question for you, like, have you been on a team or a situation where it's like you're just a completely different team in scrims to... Yeah, that was us last year. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were the epitome of that last year, and, um, yeah. How do you approach that conversation for, like, how? Do, where does that start? Because, like, you guys last year, I'm assuming you guys lost a lot in scrims? Yeah, we... we at least my memory of it was that we did not have a very good track record. <laughs> Maybe the stats might tell a different story, but yeah. uh, my memory is that we would always lose in scrims, but honestly, our morale was not shaken mm -hmm. from that, and I think that's the biggest thing, honestly. It's just like the vibes that um, you have, win or lose, just how much you can take away from winning or losing. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into the bracket in a second, but actually, we, we skipped over a little bit there. Last split summer 2023 mm -hmm. you're lcs champion and obviously this split the expectations are higher yeah and things were super disappointing i i just kind of want to wonder like now that you have a week away from it 
Like, how are you reflecting on what happened in spring? Yeah, we got kind of smashed. I mean, this whole split. I think even if we, like, I think we didn't level up enough, like, throughout the course of the split. And even if we, like, won our series against 100, I don't necessarily think it would have been, like, we would have been championship caliber mm -hmm. by the time, like, finals would have came around. So I think, um, yeah, just throughout the split, I don't think we leveled up as fast as we should or could have. And okay. um, I think by the time it, at playoffs came, I think it was kind of too late, even though we did play a bit better than what we played in regular season. But um, it was just it just wasn't there. Right. Any any plans for how you're going to fix that in the summer? You don't have to answer. Yeah, it I know it's always been like four days. Lock in. But I, I just, know you're here, so. <laughs> you got to lock yeah. in. Like, summer is the one that matters. Um, jokingly, but um, obviously, uh, just you have to reflect on yeah. what went wrong, what you could do better, and um, kind of just take this as a learning experience, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Good luck in summer. Let's pull up the bracket for what we have left in the spring split playoffs. Three teams. Team Liquid awaits the loser of today, and then the winner will go straight to the championship match, which will be Sunday, March 31st, day before April 1st. So just to make sure that no one thinks it's a joke. Anyway, we're not the only league with finals. Next week, Azale, Kobe, Medios, and more have a message about the NACL playoffs, which I think have their finals on April 1st. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, next up in some news, it was announced that NACA Finals will be live here in the Riot Games Arena, which is obviously a pretty big deal because this could be the first time some of these players are actually taken to the stage. I am so pumped for this. To get to see players experience their first ever game on stage is incredible. You know, kind of learning what it's like. Uh, what's NACL? So speaking of magic, Cubby, I hear you worked some to get NACL Finals live somehow. Yeah, team effort. Uh, but you know what? We're going back to the studio on April 1st for our live finals. You can get tickets now, and there's even going to be an award show to go along with it. So you know what's interesting, Emily? Not only are they bringing back the most valuable prospect, but they're introducing a new slew of awards for the players and teams also to vote on. Yeah, so looking at the list, there's also going to be a, a most improved player and a rookie of the split award, and they're voting for all pros. It's kind of like we do in the LCS, so it'll feel a little more familiar, I guess. Yo, Eric, they just announced that NACL finals are live and that we can get tickets. Oh, sick. Playoffs are on right now. Put it on. Let's go. Welcome back. Let's pull up our Samsung SSD Fast Five for this week. Get cleaner socks, Kangas. <laughs> That's a message to you. <laughs> Just to note, the LCS average is all of spring split plus playoffs. Wow, playoffs players are just destroying the LCS average. Yeah, it was just FlyQuest and C9. I mean, it makes sense for, I mean, Blabber to be fastest to level six for I mean, Jungler. I mean, we talk about him being more efficient, but Inspired a lot of times we'll get on the map a little bit more. So, like, a lot of these don't are not surprising to me. I'm yeah, hoping the fastest kill stays low today because I want action-packed games. A reminder that Samsung is partnered with Sleeper and Fantasy LCS, and you can earn bonus points each week for drafting the best performers to your team. Congrats to those of you who claimed that reward this week. Plus, use code SSD990PROLCS through March 29th to get 20% off 990PRO 1, 2, and 4 terabyte SSDs. And something else about today's series. Okay, let me know. Is the All-Pro. Mm -hmm. Which All-Pros are in the series? I know that... Some of us did not think many Cloud9 players would make it to the All-Pro, yet it's actually almost all. Almost all of them. That's actually crazy. Which ones, okay, this is a great conversation. Which one are you surprised about uh, made it into All-Pro, just in general? Um, Berserker, I think that My one man. to me is a surprise. I think JoJo deserved it. He was kind of like 1v9ing yeah. uh, at least some of the games. Um, and then Blabber and Vulcan, I'm not sure exactly. Um, honestly, I just pay attention to top lane. I don't really pay attention to anything else. But um, <laughs> I didn't think Berserker was having like his high highs like that we're all, we all know him for. So that's why it was surprising for me. One thing I'm super curious about, just because we've had a lot of conversation, or I've seen a lot of conversation around All Pro, and the because we had so few games, kind of a discrepancy between people who are outside of like a scrim environment and then player votes. When you're looking at, I can't recall if you've ever voted for All Pro, but when you're looking at like evaluating other players in your position, 
how much does scrim data matter versus like how many stage games you guys are actually able to watch? Uh, I think I would say it's a combination of both. I think scrim, you can have a good gauge and on stage, I think it's how they execute, um, like whatever matchup they're playing and then base it off that. So I would give like about half, half stock, maybe okay. a bit more to scrims, honestly, compared to stage because you're only playing like 18 games. Yeah, or, yeah. normally 14 yeah, games. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, Golden Guardians. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> my question. Flag, I want to talk about the playoff timelines, FlyQuest and and Cloud9, and what their histories are like. For FlyQuest, if they win the split, it would be the first split there in their organization's history. Yeah, I'd say it's really strange thinking back to that spring 2020 and summer 2020 era they had, where they actually finished like back to back second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet it, when you look back to it, you're just like, oh yeah, they're They've never been super good, yet they were in finals twice in a row. Yeah, that was uh, what, Solo, I Santorin, forgot the Power of Evil. Santorin, yeah. Power of Evil era. Wild Turtle, and I forgot. Was yeah. it Ignar? I was think it? it was Ignar. Might have been, yeah. Yeah. Cloud9, back-to-back, uh, -back, couldn't go back-to-back-to-back to back to back thanks to Dokla <laughs> and the squad, but trying to get right back on there, even though the regular season was a little rough, that's uh, if they're able to win this split, that's a pretty impressive three out of four era of dominance. Yeah, and like my thought process, like for Cloud9, they've they've been a team that has always had championship championship expectations, whereas teams around them, from like Team Liquid, that of course have done that in the past, um, Energy, of course, being able to win the first one, but like. I look towards FlyQuest, a team that have definitely funded and tried their hardest to get a championship with, mm -hmm. the, the, with the teams, the rosters that they picked up. The biggest shock for me was the third place last year because it was third place and then did not qualify for a team yeah. that everyone had high expectations for. So the lessons, of course, was with this roster that they ended up bringing. And a lot of people are high on it. Only problem is playoffs started and Cloud9 are looking good again. <laughs> That's the only issue is that they've found a way to creep back into mm -hmm. like championship expectations immediately. Emily? Yeah, I think uh, the, the most shocking thing to me for the FlyQuest timeline was last summer. Yeah. Because like as they started oh, losing, I, yeah, I was just like, oh, <laughs> they have wild. to rebound. Like I remember I kept... And I think you did too. Kept picking mm -hmm. them. Where like they're, we've they've got a you know they're due. Like this is such a good team. They did so well last split. And yeah, whatever happened internally was. Uh, I know. I feel like this year's FlyQuest has done everything they can to just never speak of that roster. <laughs> <laughs> like five players, they were. Everyone thought they were going to Worlds after not yep. like week yeah. six of the spring split. And now it's just totally new squad. Let's just yeah. let's just roll with it. But this is going to be a, a really good series. And speaking of which, those two guys on stage, I got a chance to catch up with them about 30 minutes ago. Check it out. Thank you very much. I'm here with Mithy and Nuke Duck, head coaches for FlyQuest and Cloud9. And both of you guys were able to win your best of fives last week. 3-2 against Team Liquid, 3-0 against Hunter Thieves. But after the sketchy regular season that Cloud9 kind of had, did you expect to see Cloud9 in this winner's bracket final still? Uh, yeah, I expected it. They faced like 100 Thieves and I thought, you know, C9 just like stronger players. So I thought they would, uh, yeah, they would win, yeah. And Mithy, uh, one interesting thing that I just learned is that even though FlyQuest had side selection for game one, they picked red side. Did that surprise you and why? Uh, yeah, it did and uh, it's very scary. So uh, yeah, usually teams pick blue side because it generally has better win rate and it's easier to prep, like uh, for the first game at least. So um, yeah, it was surprising. They have some something planned. And uh, Mithy, you've also made multiple finals in a row with Cloud9. A win today also puts you in the finals once again. What do you have to do to make sure you make it to finals again? Win. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> no, just win. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Nuke Duck FlyQuest still trying for the first championship from the org. Has there been any conversations about that? Or are you just trying to take it one game at a time? Uh, yeah, just one game at a time. Yeah. Uh, we. Yeah. No, I mean, we're not talking about, like, it would be great to win, I don't know, uh, but we're not, like, talking about the, that so much right now, yeah. But that's been the goal from the start, so, you know. All right, well, thank you guys very much. Uh, I'll let you go, get ready for the games. We're done here. A lot of people in the esports industry like to, you know, pretend that maybe you're a very popular player or whatever, and that's why you can be all high and mighty or whatever, compared to the people that do more of the background work, like managers or even fans. I don't feel that way at all. I want to make sure that everyone knows that I stand on the same ground, you know? I'm the same as other people. I just, people just like watching what I do. That's the only difference.
Thank you, FlyQuest. That's a preview of their docu-series inventory. They got a bunch of episodes of that up. But Raz, yeah, you had something for us. Yes, I did. The conversation was about the top lane. We okay. needed to talk about top lane between how Fudge has been performing, uh, you know, in this, this playoffs versus Whippo. So I thought for us, we needed to start talking about Whippo versus Fudge, okay. like in this matchup. Okay, what about them though? Well, this looks weird. Yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. We need to update this a bit if we could. Just a little bit, if we can. Oh, we're oh okay. Yeah, it's a little bit. Okay. All right, actually, Whippo's, that lease is now fitting a little better. But I think He's one more time. a little wider. It doesn't look, okay, this looks right. This okay, looks right. Big this Fudge is... versus Wide Whippo. Oh my These God. look like the accurate pictures of the two. That's actually insane. So I just want us to actually start talking about them both in the top lane. Like, who do we think are better laners, better team fighters, just metrics overall going into the series. Thankfully, okay. we have you, Dokla. Uh, you can call us idiots in general if you yeah, think we're wrong I'll on this call one. You out, yeah. Okay, perfect. So let's start on this one. First one is better I'm laning. So leaning. if you agree with, okay, but I mean, I'm, I'm gonna pick laning. mine. I actually, yeah. this yeah, might be an unpopular opinion. Up, and then I'll this be might the, be an unpopular I'll be the opinion. Judge of it. Okay, all right. I, I better actually laning. think this Damn. might be an unpopular opinion. Damn, I'll start here. What? I'll, I'll actually go really? Here. I'll be here. Yeah. Oh, hey. you're making me look like a fool. Explain yourself. Well, I think Whippo, when he's on his champions, he has a really good, clear idea of how he wants to execute his lane, and then he generally does it really well, and then puts himself in a good position. And I would say his picks are more volatile in terms of like spicy counter picks, and I think Fudge is pretty standard, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just think Whippo does like what Fudge might do, but just executes it a bit better. Yeah. That makes sense. I, what hard, what's hard for me is like, we had that one series versus 100 Thieves where he did phenomenally. And during the regular season, Fudge was on and off. So it's really tough for me to kind of discern what's, what is he going to look like going into this series for the rest I of the mean, playoffs. For me, they're both super analytical about their laning phases. But yeah. uh, I think at least in playoffs, Fudge has been been better at winning. Yes. Like specifically setting up dives and things like that, working his manipulating his wave to work with rest. Okay, but to be fair, they played one best of five against um, Hundred Thieves, and I think sure. everyone played well that game. And I, I think TL is a far better yeah. team than Hundred Thieves, and they went to game five. So like, True. you guys have to give it stock in terms of who he was playing against. Okay. All right, let's go to the next topic. Yeah, team fighting. Team fighting. Who's the better team fighter? Okay, you know what? I'm moving uh, over here. Uh, it's a tough I one. I actually don't even know. You uh, can go in the middle if you want. Yeah, I'll just stand in the middle. This They're one, I think. Uh, team fighting. Top lane doesn't really matter too much. You just do what you're told. But <laughs> I'm not like in the group think we have. We have yeah, it was I don't know about this. This is rough. Yeah. I don't yeah. feel great about What's this. What's next? What's next? Okay, I mean, I'll just I'll just start by saying with team fighting. I mean, Whippo generally will pick for the team. He'll pick mm -hmm. four or five. Carry potential. Carry potential. Uh, More carry. Dude, this one reaches feel, back a little like bit. I feel like this is equal. I'm sticking with Bipo. I mean, his old game. You gotta game. pick a side. I'm sticking with Bipo. No, you don't. The wide Bipo, yeah. big fudge. All right. Uh, I'll, uh, I mean, I just remember his Olaf games that really stand out to me. So. Same. Now you gotta uh, explain Mine is yourself. more historical. Because I remember, like, especially in playoffs, fudge carries games with his counter picks fairly frequently. It did happen with the twist of fate, but even back to, I know everyone memed on him because he didn't do it at MSI, but like he carried with the Fiora counter picks. Like he ran the top lane meta a couple years ago or a year and a half ago in, in top lane. So I think he actually has the potential to carry a lot of games. Wait, if we're going more carry potential though, Whippo has done it in two roles, like historically. Carried? Yeah. I, I okay. loved Bwipo Jungle. I mean, I'm a big Bwipo Jungle oh, apologist. I thought you were talking about AD. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. More AD potential. Sense, yeah. Last more one, more X Factor. I, I definitely think it has to be. I mean, Bwipo. yeah. He has uh, the pocket picks yeah. up the wazoo. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Just it's because I feel like he, yeah, he has so many interesting, like not just counter picks, but also blind picks that he'll go to that you yeah. might not always think of. We got a squad over here. Yeah, I know. Anyway, that was fun. That was fun, Raz. <laughs> All right, uh, Emily. I know you wanted to talk about Chovy and JoJo. We've covered yeah. top lane, so let's let's hit the mid lane up. Yeah. So there's a joke that um, JoJo is the NA Chovy. He said this himself. He wants to be the NA Chovy. So we're gonna look at their champ pool. Uh, does he want to be NA Chovy or is he just copying Chovy? Well, we're essentially gonna use it as a predictor, right? So yeah. the last. Champions that Chovy played are actually Aurelian Soul, the Silas, which is not here. It's not on the graphic. Silas. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good Silas. Uh, <laughs> Oriana, so that. Yone, Tristana, Talia, and Corky. Mm -hmm. And 
This is, I, I want to see if it's true where like there's a rumor that if Chovy plays something, like now that Chovy's played Aurelian Soul, JoJo's gonna look at it and be like, hmm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Aurelian Soul is like pretty good, you guys. You just have uh, to find the correlation between after Genji plays and yeah, the, exactly. how similar the drafts might be. Yeah. After. I think it's there, honestly. We've heard all the players he looks up to. Like it's not necessarily a meme. Like there's definitely large grains of truth yeah. to this. Uh, and I think the, the other really interesting thing, uh, as we look at like the vast amount of champions that Chovy has also played on his side, obviously played way more games in LCK. Um, but going up against Jensen today, I think Jensen has had a really good split. And mm. some of the comps that FlyQuest were willing to run in their last series, particularly Jensen locking in the Annie for a carry Viego comp, I think, a lot of teams, and again, I'm going to bring it up just because everyone keeps talking about Milky Way. A lot of teams are like, why don't we just play carry jungle? Why don't we just play Milky Way style? And it requires your mid laner, like Care, yeah. to play stuff like Annie or Karma a lot of the time um, and kind of like take one for the team, right? Uh, drop Ego and play something a little bit less flashy uh, so that your jungler can kind of be on more of a carry. And I think Jensen exemplified that in his Annie series. Yeah, and I think for me, expecting there to be just a lot of Talia, um, it has dominated the playoffs. Yep. Jensen had a great Talia. He's not gonna be able to play Azir. So I think there just needs to be a response to the pick. A decent one could be Annie if you're trying to set up with your jungler. So that that's what I'm thinking at the moment. I mean, Jensen looked like he was ready to play Annie right there. He's just, he's all right, just lock me in Annie. Like, all right. <laughs> he's right. like, all right, drop sorry, sorted out. And uh, trust me that this next point is gonna be on topic of C9, but it's gonna take a little while. So, uh, Dokla, I want to get your opinion on this. Okay. Um, so, what you have here uh, is my. You can look at the big screen there. Okay. Uh, so that's my twelfth grade report card. <laughs> okay. uh, the grade is on the left, and then the subject is on the bottom. So, basically, do you think that I was like a top tier student? Just with, based like, off this. Yeah, like I was really good at math. I could no. not speak no French way. for the life of me. If you're failing in history, or like, see, I want to say it's failing. Yeah, like, it's pretty close. If you're not doing close. well in history, then I... I can't draw. Like, I'm decent at public <laughs> speaking, though, right? Like, I'm okay. Yeah. Your PE grade is off yeah. the charts. Yeah. There, you know? Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> what's off the charts is the math grade. It's oh, yeah. even behind this. So you're um, heavy in math and PE. Okay, so so we're, we're pretty sure that this is like... I had like a pretty average high school experience, right? Mm -hmm. My yeah. parents would say it's a success just off math alone. They my, don't care about it. My so, parents would say that you need to get A's in everything yeah, or you're out is, of the This house. looks like a failure. <laughs> Fair enough. Man. Let's take this exact same format then okay. and look at Cloud9 Spring. And I have to ask you, oh, God. are they back? Because instead of PE, it's their week one performance. <laughs> <laughs> and they were back, but they kind of struggled. They had that one week when we were doing the face-off where they said they were back and then they clearly yeah, yeah. weren't and now they had another good series. So like... The rumors were false. Are uh, they actually I back? True. I think... Okay, I think uh, it's a bit of a difference between school and uh, playoffs, but like... Okay. <laughs> you just cut everything out before playoff starts. It doesn't matter. All that matters <laughs> is how you play on the day. And yeah. um, right now this. they're looking like they're back. So. Like all I'm saying, if we could just bring back this, the school report card. <laughs> just bring back the school report card if possible. Because at the end of the day, week six doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. You can cope. Wow, okay, my bad, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they can do the report card. This one is not working. That's fair. If it's not yeah. working, it's not working. But all I'm saying, if I'm talking to my parents, they don't even think that French class exists. You just have to cope. Yeah. What is art? What is French class? What's yeah. week six? All that matters is that you did well in math and you yeah. did well at the end math of the split. Is all that matters. So yeah. I think they're back. Oh, it worked. You yeah, saw This is wild. wild. I got your yeah, well, Oh, That's great. Okay. Friends, I didn't you were really math, angry okay. at French. But this is memes as an introduction. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think a legitimate question about Cloud9 because I look at the way they played in week one mm -hmm. and they picked all winning lanes and they smashed people. Mm -hmm. And then when all of the things were happening when we said they weren't back, they were still picking all winning lanes and just not smashing people. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't necessarily feel like they've evolved or fixed things. Like they just smashed 100 Thieves with all winning lanes. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be their one trick. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they can win the LCS with that trick. 
Yeah, I just want to say your memory is a lot better than mine because I don't remember back to week one. But um, <laughs> going back to last week when they played, I think um, they kind of just won mid 2v2. And it was really easy to play the game from yeah. there. And top lane had counter pick. I think Fudge executed his, uh, his picks well. And then Berserker was back. And yeah, Berserker was back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, if you win all your lanes, it's good. the game's going to look really easy. But I think now they're, they're against better laners. Uh, we'll see how macro plays a part of it. Yeah, I feel like winning your lanes is not a one trick <laughs> play style necessarily. That's fair, it's like the core uh, way of getting yeah, leads like, in League of Legends. Like that's how our recent team, uh, T1, won the World <laughs> Championship. Um, but that, that joke aside, I think the big difference in me in ter uh, for me in terms of like, is C9 back? Obviously Berserker played better, but it was the one-two punch of JoJo um, and Blabber actually working together as a mid-jungle duo. I thought they looked better together as a unit yeah. against 100 Thieves than they had all season. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in what our predictions for this one is going to be because at Let's least for up. me, once we get a view of it, even though I'm predicting Cloud9, here it is. Both Jad and Doko going towards FlyQuest. I think FlyQuest has a real chance based off top, the top side of the map. What's your thought on this one? Why'd you pick uh, FlyQuest? Um, well, I think this game could, or this series could easily go five games. And I just picked FlyQuest because I think they're just more, um, they have more like plays in their playbook. I think they go through side lanes a lot when they're behind and they play from behind pretty well. So I think they just have um, a, a, just a better chance of winning. And for what it's worth, I'm very scared of Cloud9. Yeah. Like week one and one week of playoffs is still enough to strike fear. In the <laughs> yeah. like, because the way they won just does look very dominating if they can pull that off. But I have to, I have to give an edge to FlyQuest because like it's two of seven weeks where they've legitimately been good. And I think FlyQuest has been better than them, you know, five of the seven weeks. Yeah. And this is tough for me. I had a 3-1 for Cloud9 for one reason. I felt like FlyQuest's success came through Jensen performing versus APA and then being able to use that advantage to go top lane and work alongside Inspired. Whereas versus C9, I think JoJo is a much tougher opponent in lane to deal with. And then bot lane is, I think, going to be a travesty. <laughs> like, I think Berserker and Vulcan have still been really strong laners. And I, that's pretty much how Cloud9 will win their games is play through bot lane. Uh, and play through JoJo, and that's not going to be a struggle here for I also just heard there was a chat poll. 57% of chat said C9 is back, okay. which okay. I'm going to extrapolate and say 57% think that French doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well. Yeah, there's yeah. no reason to learn French in school. Thank you for that chat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is coming from, from us at the lounge. We're only a minute and 20 seconds from the game. Let's get into them. Sorry, Van Vulcan. Van Smolder. <laughs> in the LCS, champions aren't born, they're made. Champions are crowned, History is reforged. The beauty of the game comes to bear in its tensest moments, where the crowd roars and cries at each joy and heartbreak, where split seconds make the difference between the fallen and the forever. The LCS is always here to bring you back into the game, time and time. Red Bull gives you wings. Red Bull gives you wings. regular season team looking to lock themselves into finals for a shot at their first LCS title. It's FlyQuest. 
On the other side, a super team that looked pretty damn super in our first week of playoffs. Cloud9 are no stranger to finals weekends, and they're just as hungry to lock themselves in for a shot at another LCS title. The LCS playoffs continue. FlyQuest versus C9 starts right now. Welcome back to the LCS, everybody. It's time for another installment of Playoffs Action. I am Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Kobe here for our series. And what are you grinning so big for? <laughs> you returned, you're refreshed. Yeah. You're back and better than ever. Production production actually got us a bucket here, just in case. A bucket. <laughs> well, thank you. You are feeling well thank yesterday. Thank you, production, for the bucket. We will hopefully We're not glad you're back, to be using any of that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. But we have another, hopefully, banger of a series lined up for ourselves here today. Before we get into champ select though, we're going to hear from Vulcan on what he expects from FlyQuest headed into these games. With FlyQuest, I think we can expect something more creative from them. Um, Bwipo has always been someone who's like willing to play these odd picks uh, if he has you know whatever reason that he finds to, to play them. Um, so I think they'll be more unpredictable in draft. And same goes for Busio, he's also willing to play like more unconventional supports. And yeah, we'll be, you know, we'll have a long draft meeting before playing them because uh, we have to be on top of our game when we draft against them. And other than that, I think, I mean, I, I just think when you have Jojo Pyun lining up in the mid lane against any LCS teams, you already know that you're going to be winning mid lane. So as long as we don't grief too hard and, you know, everyone does their job well, doesn't do very many mistakes, hopefully none, um, then I feel like, yeah, I think FlyQuest isn't a problem for us. Vulcan specifically shouting out Jojo and his prowess in the mid lane here is something that C9 can rely on. Going up against Jensen, though, who has also been a top performer for FlyQuest, in part, a big reason in part for why they've been able to find the success they have so far in this split. It's pretty interesting, too, with Jensen's whole career, it is usually felt like he was in the shadow of some other superstar mid laner before it was Bjergsen. Now, apparently, it's Jojo uh, when even inspired Jensen's own jungler is always talking about how Jojo is the best and Jojo is such a magnificent <laughs> mid laner. Feels like, you know, Inspired still got some like old love He's connection to his ex. With his He's ex, gotta yeah. On. Gotta move got on. A new mid laner now, Inspired. <laughs> Gonna have to move on in this series because I have to say one of the biggest things in Cloud9 series was Blabber ganking mid. He had really creative moves around Fog of War. He was very active. Uh, so I'm super excited for especially the whole top side of the map. Uh, in this series, including mid lane there with the junglers and top laners. And I think it's it's kind of an interesting position for Blabber because for so long, he has been the definitive best jungler in the LCS. And then you come into this split, he's not first team, he's not second team, pretty much everyone is saying Inspired, River, have they outperform you. Even yesterday after Umti's win, he's saying, yeah, I actually hope I play against Blabber because he's worse than Inspired. He's the easier jungler to play against. Mm -hmm. Everyone I think really has been kind of doubting him and saying you're not where you used to be. So it's up to Blabber to kind of reclaim his spot at the top of the pile. Exactly. For so long, the conversation has always been about who's number two underneath him. But you hit the nail on the head, man. It's all been about River and Inspired so far here during the spring split. But let's go ahead and get into draft because the first six bands are already done. It's Oriana, Varus, and Rek'Sai banned out by C9. FlyQuest removing the Ari, the Lucian, and the Nico. C9 rapidly locking Kalista. And the Rek'Sai is the one I'm focused on because uh, Fudge himself had specific words talking about Bwipo and how scary Bwipo can be with counterpick. And in game number one here, FlyQuest are starting out on red side. They could save counterpick for Bwipo. Rek'Sai top, we just saw Broken Blade uh, in Europe a couple of games uh, playing on this champ and how annoying it can be with the mobility, with the healing. And it's also interesting, you know, knowing that Bwipo has all these different picks that he's cooking up. They're on red side, right? So they have that fifth pick, counter pick. You know, what is he going to go for? What is Fudge going to play? When Fudge was casting with us last week, he was talking about the difficulties and how being on red side is often good against Whippo just to get a normal matchup. Not even yeah. necessarily to get a big counter pick, but just to make sure that he's not doing anything too crazy. So I'm really curious, you know, is there something that's really been cooked up for this game one? You, you talked about the Rek'Sai. Obviously, that's banned out. But Whippo has a lot of picks he could go to. Certainly does. Olaf was one 
one of the super big ones where he was able to actually 1v9. But this draft is already pretty interesting. One of the biggest changes for Cloud9 in playoffs was that the entire team was playing better than they did in the regular season, but especially to me, the bottom lane yeah. played so much better to much more your expectations of Berserker, especially. Mm -hmm. And now they're slamming the Callista Renata, which is one of the most aggro bottom lanes there are. So definitely expect uh, Blabber to pay some attention there. I mean, their Lucian Nami game was night and day from what they were doing in the regular season. The one that they played in playoffs, they dominated. They were able to pull off dives. They were able to really stomp through these lanes yeah. and play towards those advantages. This is a super aggressive lane. They can play that sort of style. They can really look to pound home an advantage, especially with the Tzalea, who can be moving around the map if he gets lane bro. Exactly. We're talking about junglers looking towards bottom lane. Talia loves to be able to find those windows to make those rotations. Get this Callista snowballing early so you can shut down that Senna stack machine before it becomes the absolutely oppressive power that it can evolve into. Renekton will be locked in for FlyQuest. So we're not going to get to see that red side fifth pick, top side counter pick. Instead, they're just going to go with pretty much the most basic standard evergreen top laner there can be. Yes, yeah, so this, is, this is pretty interesting, right? So, you know, I'm curious if there is going to be any kind of surprise swap around or something like that from FlyQuest, because otherwise, you know, what it looks like is you've already locked both your soul laners in the first three on red side. We already know that Senna's going to be going bot. You've already seen what the entire bot lane is from Cloud9, so you wouldn't really be getting any sort of a counter pick on red side, which I generally feel like can be somewhat of a failed draft. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, maybe there is potential for things to be swapped around or be a little bit surprising. It could potentially be Karma support, though generally we do see Senna almost exclusively with melee champions these days. Senna and Karma both being on your team does also... <laughs> <laughs> Toby, you're going to enjoy that level. So, for people who don't watch the dive and don't know, this is our dive bet. Yeah. Both Azale and Meteos uh, bet, that, bet that Cloud9 were going to win the entire split. Uh, and I bet on... They gave me two. I got FlyQuest. Number one special. Yeah. <laughs> I got FlyQuest. And I, I got 100 Thieves. That one didn't work out uh, for me as well. So all my coins are on FlyQuest. When we were doing our NACL co-stream during one of the off weeks, you also made some bet about eating a lemon. What is it with you and the lemons? The, I, I had the idea because of the dive one, and we can come oh, up with anything else. He really likes lemons. <laughs> <laughs> he secretly just goes home and eats a full lemon every night. He's been training. The lemon lover. <laughs> I have never eaten a lemon in my life. That's what would yeah, say. That's exactly what it would be. <laughs> we're not falling off fire. Well, well, I have Thank you. Shout out. Good luck out. Oh, I'll keep that we in appreciate mind. you. We're covered. We got the we got the we bucket got here. Can, we got Pepto. Yeah. All right. Anyone I've got a lemon for Kobe. I got a bottle of Pepto. <laughs> Kobe gets a lemon. Where are these lemon accusations coming <laughs> from? What, what do you get? We need to find a present for you from the audience. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to find out. Maybe someone has something for me. Hey, Vi went through. Boys, focus okay. up. Focus up. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Vi to Leo. Okay. All right. All right. Twitch Vi to Leo. <laughs> Sejuani, Tom Kench, all banned away. We got Lee Sin for FlyQuest and for Inspired. We got Vi locked in for Blabber. What is the final pick of the draft here for C9. What are we going to get in the top lane to deal with that lizard? Cool. Is there any chance that this is a Lisa and bot? I feel like if, if someone was going to cook in this league for support, that it could be Busio. Nah, I think Blabber's Lee Sin was, or Blabber's Lee Sin was in, insane. Inspired Lee Sin's insane. We've had so many cool I Lee just, Sin. I just wonder, it's game one. You're red side. You're really not going to cook anything. You're just going to blind pick both your soul laners yeah, for game, quest? game one. Game one is, is chill. We save the cooking till later okay. in the series. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll find out. Fifth pick here coming through could be way so it, it's if yeah, it's karma, it could be way support or karma support so yeah. both these are uh, could be possible we'll have to see where it's gonna go uh, this will be a double range lane with Senna, which isn't common in pro play but i do really think these are strong in solo queue uh, so it is looking like karma i wonder if it's gonna be a farming karma i've seen that with both i have seen um Senna swain is something that's relatively popular online that people will play that and have a farming swain so you could do that with karma you could just have it be that support as well i think this is pretty cool and way for Jensen, he's looked good in the couple times that he's brought it out. We also saw uh, it brought out by Insanity a few times, and he yeah. looked really good on his well. I, I would definitely greatly prefer it to be a farming uh, Karma and a fasting Senna. Me too. Okay. So you can get uh, some nice value out of the souls there. And Karma just does so well with money now, uh, with the changes. So, I, you know, I really want to see the Malignants on it. I really want to see Busio getting some, uh, some, some spotlight time because he got first team All-Pro. Yep. 
here. Uh, very impressive for such a young player in the LCS. And of course, his history being a mid laner before and then transferring down to uh, support in the bottom lane. You kind of want to see him. Your support. Yeah, you kind of want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. see him on like AP carries, you know, and, and, and them actually going with the farming style. So how do you guys want to see FlyQuest play this game out because Cloud9 got that buy Talia combo that's so powerful with mid jungle. They got to have the Callista Renata super aggro bot lane, and we already discussed how FlyQuest isn't getting a counter pick with the red side round five pick. How Senna doesn't normally pair with a pick like Karma. So what's the trick here? How do you navigate this? So I will say, you know, they did flex the Karma to bot, so they did get answering that pick, you know, with, with the the pick of your mid lane for Jensen. But I think a lot of it for Inspired is just about answering where the plays are going to be, and I think this is a style that he's really, really strong at. He wants to answer where Blabber is going to go. They want to look to scale. Way, Senna, Karma, really powerful as far as their scaling. And I think they're going to look to fight around these objectives. Lots of shielding, lots of early game power here for them. Um, so I think it's going to be about strong lanes, poking them out, and then setting up our own objectives. Yeah, I think the biggest target here is going to be for sure the Vi Talia combo. This combo mm. is the easiest in the game to pull off. Vi guarantees the seismic shove. You have so much burst damage. <laughs> and and Jensen is playing Huey. Uh, <laughs> Jojo with some kind words here. Okay. Everybody's a Yappa now. Yeah, the, the Yap meta has dawned, uh -huh. gentlemen. Yeah. Welcome to the new era of LCS. Him. He's taking over. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a little APA in all of us. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, if you're starting the chatting now, uh, I would say it's probably going to be harder for the way to answer the chat. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, as we were talking about, Lee Sin has been so big so far in playoffs. And, and Inspired certainly has been creative, although they did start with a ward on Raptors that does see Inspired now, so they know that he is starting on Raptors' red side. Well, they're going to go behind them. Yeah. This is actually really cheeky. C9 really looking to put that aggro immediately into play. Bottom side, Busio gets chunked a little bit there by Berserker and Vulcan. This is something that I... I'm really happy to see just based on the terrain changes. I remember back when the changes first came in for this season, there was plenty of cheesy clips going around with bottom lanes and junglers doing just that, going around for that surprise pathing. Yeah, I think it's smart, right? You just get instant value out of the Guardian proc as well from Vulcan. He starts mm -hmm. with the E, they get a little bit of chunk. It is going to be Busio that's farming. He's starting with the Doran's Ring, Senna's on support item. So it is going to be that fasting Senna, the farming Karma here. Uh, and just going for what could be, you know, low risk play, but maybe medium reward. Hey, maybe they go up a little bit too far and you get a good chunk and you get an advantage yeah. in that 2v2. Because FlyQuest for their side, it's really about the poke. They don't want to commit to all ins with the Senna Karma. They have to whittle you down, stay high on health, utilizing those Senna Qs for pass through heals and damage. Uh, and really just try to play a little bit more of a slow burn. All right, let's check a, a track inspired right now. Because he did what's become pretty common now is a one quadrant clear into recall for longsword mm -hmm. uh, start on a lot of these ad junglers so inspired's coming back out with his first purchase with that extra ad from the long sword gives you the extra advantage and a little bit of a scrap well inspired clearing through that blue side quadrant now you can see the same thing being done by blabber who is probably going to finish just slightly ahead of him again because he didn't have to go back complete that first shot 34 to 35 on the treats so they're still both around the same point here in terms yep. of their jungle progression I mean, basically, this this clear where you do three camps space and get a longsword is only advantageous if you can actually make something happen with the longsword. Otherwise, yeah. you're just doing a slower six camp clear, right? Because Flavor can actually look to base here. But if they do meet up bot or they meet up at a scuttle, you have that extra AD, you have that extra little bit of combat power that potentially can make a difference in these fights. Yeah, exactly. With both of them starting on the same side of the map, I can see how you can predict it as we're going to end up fighting over something. Whether it's a crab, whether it's bottom lane, it's most likely going down that way. But Inspired now pathing back up towards the top side of things as blabber has already secured the bottom river scuttle crab so the long sword doesn't end up getting to make a whole lot of impact just yet inspired yeah, he's not going to get anything yeah, from I mean, JoJo. He, he was seen by the minion, minions as well yeah. and, and jojo also obviously putting that ward but just trading the scuttles for now uh, what it also does set you up for is if uh, he stays out here for another 50 seconds the void grub early arrival mm. um it's super nice to just be there immediately when void grub spawn yoinking the first one you can instantly take those if you have smite first one is uh immediately toast especially to elise that has execute damage
Chojo continuing to put the pressure here on Jensen, shoving him back. Not a whole lot of mana left for the Kalia to work with. But this is actually pretty concerning because Jensen already TP'd back and he's that low. Yeah. Jojo hasn't even based, right? So Jojo's going to be able to reset here. If he bases, immediately TPs and can actually lock Jensen in this lane for a little bit longer, it can get concerning for Jensen. So what Jensen's going to try to do is as soon as Jojo bases, he's going to try to actually reset the wave, bounce it, and get a base off himself. Oh, bottom lane, Matsu forced to flash back as Berserker and Vulcan find first blood in the 2v2. Kalista Renata doing what you draft him to do. Ooh, I want to see the very beginning of that because Vulcan looked like he was able to land a nice handshake. Uh, flash answered there as Berserker chased him down and first blood. This Cloud9 bottom oh, lane! Oh my goodness, man! You disrespect him once, all right. You disrespect him twice. This bottom lane's over. They're still back. <laughs> Cloud9 <laughs> in playoffs. All right, JoJo here, uh, fishing around. Looks like it'd just be the control word, though. And they're going to sacrifice the grubs on top side. Of course, Blabber did have the later recall since Inspired went for the early longsword one. So um, there is the Doran's Blade difference, which is pretty popular for a lot of AD junglers. Remember, there is going to be a nerf pretty soon where Doran's yeah. Blades will be uh, unique with uh, jungle items and support items. So you won't be able to do this for long but Blabber grabs one while you still can. And we saw Jensen go back to base to heal up. He arrives oh. back into lane, and he's already in some trouble. Whippo, now nah, he's not going to end up falling for the trap there, getting beat up underneath the turret, so he'll escape. That was actually really close, though, because he, he kind of did. He got knocked under the tower, but Fudge didn't quite have the damage to finish off the cannon, so the turret didn't actually swap aggro over onto the Renekton. So uh, nice little attempt there by Fudge, but doesn't quite have the damage to burst down those minions. Otherwise, I think Whippo could have been in a lot of trouble. Flabber, not six, but he is PTA. He does have a D-Blade. He is really strong early, and this could be trouble for FlyQuest. Masu and Lucio trying to get back underneath the turret. Blabber nicely done with the Vault Breaker, comboed with the Flash to get past Busio and immediately secure another kill on Masu. And before, in order to get into that position, he did a really nice Q over here through uh, around the ward while support just cleared out the ward. Then he waits for his Q cooldown to come back up, then goes for the gank from behind, but mid. Jojo now in trouble as Inspired looks to bring the extra burst to set Jensen up for success. FlyQuest finally respawn and get their first kill of the game. Yeah, Inspired flashing behind him. Almost, almost looked like he thought he had ult there for a second, but I guess he's probably just trying to dodge a spell or something. Either way, nicely done. Are able to get that kill. It's a good vision play that was kind of eerily reminiscent of the one that Blabber made in his last playoff series that you did a breakdown on, Kobe. Uh, really just playing on the edge of vision there. Blabber, though, back down to bot side. This time he's six now, so the ulti is prepped and ready. They know that Lee Sin is on top side, so there is an angle to potentially dive, and FlyQuest is just going to have to evacuate. Yeah, this is so scary, man. The Vi, plus when you have to deal with Renata having a bailout, it just makes the turret so dive so much more powerful because the opportunity to trade is so heavily reduced. C9 up 1,500 gold, two kills, and three grubs. Yes, FlyQuest got that first Drake, but I feel like if you gotta pick which side you wanna be on, especially comparing bottom lane, Berserker's plenty out farming his counterpart in the Karma. Yeah. He's already got a 200 gold bounty. This is what C9 fans wanna see. And look at that gold in the mid lane. Even with the kill, barely a little bit of a lead there for Jensen. I think the biggest discrepancy is the flash difference, but uh, Jensen mm. is playing into Vi Talia combo, so uh, still very dangerous even with his flash. Blabber just has to be a little bit cognizant. Make sure you don't flash to or ult too close to tower. Jensen brings you into a bad spot. Um, but they definitely still can pull off a lot of pressure right now. Blabber with his ultimate ready. And I feel like Cloud9 is going to be really happy about how the top lane is going. You're just playing this tank, Gragas, up there, who's just farming even against Whippo on yeah. the Renekton. It's been very quiet. Gragas scales incredibly well. Uh, Fudge was such a standout in their previous series against 100 Thieves, really was dominant against Sniper, had all these great counter picks, but he's showing, hey, he can play the other side of it, he can play weak side, doesn't need that jungle attention, and as long as you're just chilling and farming up here, you are so happy as the Gragas. I mean, it's kind of going back to what Vulcan was talking about when we heard from him right before the series started, right? When he says, hey, we're expecting mid lane to win, so as long as the sides don't do anything egregious or bad, we're chilling, and so far, bottom lane is absolutely smashing, Fudge is neutralizing, and C9 is invading the FlyQuest jungle, stealing away that blue buff. Yeah, using their 
big, big push advantage in bottom lane to go for some of these invades. And of course, JoJo's calling, hey, Inspired has no flash still from the flashlight he pulled on me in mid lane. So Blabber, come over here. We're going for the invade. You have ult ready. Ooh. Another nice knockback there from Fudge's ulti, but not enough to really threaten anything serious on Dubwipo's Renekton. Yeah, I think, again, it's just basically a sustained play. Uh, this is actually pretty nice for, for Bupo. Being able to get the plant there kind of bails him out of a bad situation. Doesn't actually have to use his recall just yet and TP back, so he's going to be able to save that. Uh, and Fudge is just looking for these trades. You try to utilize your passive in matchups like this. You just try to constantly chip them down and it's often your mana bar versus their health bar which is going to kind of run out first these trades kind of important now too uh never mind all right we get the ultimate out of inspired but kind of important because second grubs are available right now as mid lane also trading here so once they got the ult advantage now on cooldown on inspired yeah uh, with Labber not using his but at least it sin kick being down gotta expect uh they should be able to go for six grub play here for cloud nine could be a pretty big snowball in gold. One thing FlyQuest does have going for him right now is control over the top side. Whippo shoving another wave in, trying to collect the money on the first turret plate. Fudge does not have a lot of resources still to work with, nearly out of mana here, but does have the Unleashed Teleport ready to return to base and bring him back into the fight if it does end up becoming a scrap over these grubs that Blabber is just now starting up. Jensen flashing away from the seismic shove here in mid lane. Yeah. There's that ever important summoner spell we're talking about on this immobile mage. It's all these small wins that are like, yeah, okay, grubs are free, grubs are so free right now there's no kick on lee sin now there's no flash on mid uh you know we just had the full health teleport back from jojo the freest six grubs ever here for cloud nine and not currently the response of dragon quite yet honestly if, if blabber finishes this up pretty quickly they could even retain control down here because berserker and vulcan just waiting in this brush guarding the bottom side of the map and you gotta say, six grubs, it feels so good when you can secure those as your jungler and your lanes are already winning, right? Because mid lane has been pushing in constantly, bot lane has been pushing in constantly, top is neutral or getting shoved, but it doesn't really matter because this is gonna help Vulcan, Berserker, Jojo accelerate their game, potentially take even more plates away as FlyQuest gonna start this up on Vision. Blabber's coming out from base, looks like they may be too late to contest, but they are potentially moving around. That bot lane is going in and they're going to TP. Yeah, even if they can't contest the objective, they want to try to find a fight afterwards. Fudge making his way over. Drake still at about 2k. Blabber comes over the wall. The engage immediately right on top of Inspire. They're looking to burst him down and he's already gone. Berserker gets the kill as Jojo flashes back over the wall to stay alive. The hostile takeover hits Masu and Whippo both, but C9 is going to be careful. It's going to be Whippo securing the Drake and FlyQuest is ready to fight. Masu gets the kill credit on Blabber and FlyQuest are not just gonna let C9 run the show. I think Blabber used his smite in the kill. He didn't actually have the smite for the dragon there at all. So they just walk up. I'm not sure if they tracked that or just wanted to take the fight either way, but Whippo just walks up, takes that dragon. A great start for Cloud9, turns bad as FlyQuest punish. Yeah, when you see the Vi still whacking the dragon at like 400 health, 300 health, you're like, oh, he hasn't smited yet. Up, oh, pretty sure he doesn't here? have it. So the spectator uh, is always, always is always really bugged on the cooldowns yeah. for summoner spells, so it's it's hard to, to trust if, if that or not. But uh, he obviously did not have it when they were hitting dragon. So the chase back here definitely fortunate here for Blimbo oh. to be able to go in and get it. Yeah, that was down to 38, and everyone on Cloud9 kind of stopped hitting because they realized, okay, FlyQuest is coming in. They're probably expecting Blabber to be able to smite and finish. Uh, but either way, a little bit of an oopsie there from Cloud9. Still up in gold, though. But FlyQuest does have a nice end towards a potential soul here. And it is an ocean soul, uh, which is a really powerful one. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal to not end up having to go even on these early drakes. Jojo getting dove. Nice play from Inspired, taking him right back into the waiting arms of Busio and Jensen. FlyQuest now needs nearly got this game tied up in kills. It's a pretty close one. It is, and Busio is kind of getting online. He's got his Malignant stun here already. So he's gonna be feeling good about that. Eclipse done for Inspired, as top lane just gonna be scrapping it up. Not too much gonna come from that. But Jojo, the target of quite a lot of attention, clearly Inspired wanting to shut him down, has been going mid. He spent a couple flashes already, specifically on that mid laner. Yep. Uh, this is nothing new for Jojo. This has been really what we've been seeing over the last couple of years. People are nonstop putting that attention towards him. But I will say it's a little, a little bit atypical for him to die to it this much. He has been getting better and better at actually avoiding it. So FlyQuest mm. executing well and being able to punish Cloud9 mid laner. All right, let's see what Blabber can uh, respond with here because he's got his Thunder Sky done. He has his ultimate ready mm -hmm. here on the Vi. So they're going to try and force something to start up 
the Rift Heralds to get some more tower pushing power for themselves. Looks like with the, the later reset for FlyQuest, I think they're just coming out to cover yeah. lanes and there's not going to be any fight over the actual Herald itself. Of course, this objective isn't as big of a deal as it used to be uh, last season, but still quite nice mm. in being able to push, especially if you do have six grubs, then you get a bunch of Void Mites if you drive it yep. uh, and you can swarm uh, one of these outer towers, namely mid is usually the most successful choice. And there we go, pop it mid. Exactly, they want to do just that. The charge alone will not kill the turret from this health, but with the wave already built up, with the amount of players that they had present for the push, they can hard force that one down. <laughs> C9, collect the first turret of the game. They look so goofy when there's that many, man. It's just a clown car, all the little grubs <laughs> popping out. Dude, a Rift Herald push with Belveth is now one of the funniest things in League of Legends because it's just so much garbage all over the screen. It looks like you're playing an old RTS. Get game. a York in there. Yeah. Uh, I just checked. That swarm of Void Mites did 21 damage to the secondary Let's turret. Let's go. <laughs> nice. Good it's job. A, it's about the quality of the uh -huh. damage. Uh -huh. quantity, it, you know? looked, it looked really it looked, intimidating. It was, a, it was a cool 21 damage. Oh, yeah. That was, that's, they're going to need that later. <laughs> hey, if that tower just barely dies later to like a single cast minion yeah. auto attack mm -hmm. that was the we're grubs. all going to remember this moment fly quest are taking over the top side river now though unfortunately for them there's not really a whole lot left here right now cloud nine have controlled everything that spawned inside of that pit so far in these first 15 and a half minutes of gameplay but our next neutral objective will be the third drake the first one of those ocean drakes that'll be spawning this game here in just over 60 seconds cloud nine obviously showed they were already ready to contest the previous one it just got a little bit goofy so i'm expecting us to have another fight over drake number three yeah absolutely i don't think you want to be giving fly a free in towards soul uh, that is kind of their major win condition right now that's going to be what they're looking for uh, we're looking across item completions pretty even across the board i would say maybe a little bit more power on the fly quest side for now as there's some kind of scaling items things like the roa that need a lot of time to scale up here for fudge mm. good uh safe play here from jojo too you know inspired spent a lot of time waiting around They've really had a target on JoJo, him plus Jensen, um, constantly looking for these plays, but no opportunity on the top side before the reset here for Dragon. This is also kind of interesting from Vulcan. So he's going Redemption Rush, which is pretty atypical, but I actually quite like this against Huey because so much AoE in these fights ah. that I really do think it is about answering that. You throw out the E, you shield up a lot of people, you drop that Redemption immediately when that AoE is coming through, and you can kind of potentially reset the fight from what could be a devastating situation. Also, Cloud9 have a lot of utility on their team to be able to force the location of a fight. When you have Vi Ultimate and Renata Ultimate here, you can keep them in place for the duration. Tactical nuke redemption. Exactly, for the, <laughs> for the big redemption <laughs> to land. Well, the Drake has spawned and the fight is ready to kick off. Let's see who's actually going to end up engaging here. Blabber jumping back up the wall, looking for a potential wraparound. Yeah, I'm gonna guess Blabber is gonna be the one doing it. Uh, Renata ultimate here is definitely something FlyQuest also have to be cognizant of. So they're spreading out. They, they cannot group up here. It kind of fills up the river when uh, when you've got a good position there for Vulcan. Like the banana bush control for Cloud9 here. They've got control ward in it. Uh, really helps out in their target choice now. And JoJo's going for a mid lane. Oh, he was he was walking towards mid lane, towards that, that minion wave, but they're just going to let the wave crash into tower. He's going to look for an angle, I think, here for the ulti. Try to cut some... Yeah. Oh, nice! He finds Jensen and forces the flash back over the wall. Dawning Shadow to make sure their mid laner stays alive. Comes out for C9. Berserker's already at half HP. Whippo at half now, too. They want to maintain control over the Drake for FlyQuest, but they ain't going to do it. The hostile takeover flies out, and Fudge might just drop the Spiraling Despair. He'll barely hold on, as Inspired is trapped back inside the pit, and the Drake's still at 1,700 HP. FlyQuest secures the objective, and nobody's dead on either team. Nicely done there by FlyQuest. They found the size shove on a Jensen, but Jensen poked out Berserker so much that he couldn't even really enter the fight, even after Redemption, and him picking up the Honey Fruit, he was still pretty low, so again, Cloud9 can't find the angle here, and that's three straight Dragons for FlyQuest. Cloud9 will get a little bit of gold off the back of this, but you're starting to get nervous if you're on the Cloud9 side. Yeah, you certainly are, with the way that that Dragon fight went, if the next one also uh, goes the same way, you, you really have a hole to dig yourself out of. I do like that they still as soon as uh, they didn't have follow-up damage on Inspired, and Inspired flashed away from Blabber ulting him uh, and trying to go for that inside the Dragon Pit, then they were like, you know what? We're not getting this Dragon. They back out, too much poke damage. Fudge had already been pushed out to like 50 HP maybe. And so they just run mid to try and at least get a Constellation Prize, got that secondary turret.
C9 up 2,000 gold with Jensen and Inspired up here in the top lane, just allowing Jensen to push out, making it look like, oh man, Hui's just trying to push the side lane. Be a shame if you ganked him. Maybe bait Cloud9 into a play that they aren't quite ready for, but it does not look like C9's interested in that whatsoever. Berserker here still on the Kalista, 3-0 and 1. Most kills of anybody on either team. Blade of the Rune King completed. This champion has so much outplay opportunity. Especially yeah. when you're up against stuff that's got to land skill shots like the way when you got to try to hit them with a center root or something like that. And Berserker needs to continue playing like playoff Berserker, I think, for C9 to get the dub here. And, and he also needs to rely on some teammates here to be able to hold them in place because Kalista's most scary thing is playing into big range. And when you're outranged by Huey and then Senna's soul starts stacking up and, and there's there's karma cues coming at you, there, there's a lot of range there on FlyQuest, a lot of poke damage that can be really annoying. And we saw the early stages of it in the last fight. So sometimes it can be really annoying for Kalista to actually close that range. But when you do, it just blows open. If you have a good Gragas engage, Vi ultimate, you know, into Talia combos, then it can be very explosive. But if FlyQuest can control it and get the that poke damage down they only need one more dragon um, you know one more successful fight here for them to be able to get uh, a lot of control i just think flyquest played so well around that potential engage from cloud nine they were so well spread out there was no one that could actually be two-man body slam two-man grag assaulted at any point even when blabber went in the rest of the team from flyquest then steps forward and actually zones off the follow-up they're not able to come in and actually do anything off the back of that vial so FlyQuest really positioned well, and I just think limited Cloud9's options. So Berserker didn't even really get the auto attack. He did nothing in that last fight. So he has all the gold, but if you can't get a range, you're not going to do anything with it. And I like how FlyQuest are playing really safe around these Jensen flash timers. Jensen on the way still has not died, even though enemy team has so much engage. Uh, and when he does have his cooldown on his flash, they just revert to farming, back to side lanes here. Okay, everybody keep it calm. Uh, but that champion does so much AOE damage, has a lot of range, so it can make it very problematic for, for Cloud9, especially if they wait the cooldown and get his flash back up for the extra safety. Yep, that flash cooldown has about 45 seconds left on it right now, and that next Drake will not be spawning for another 90 or so, and this oh, is the huge fight that we will be looking forward to. JoJo staying very far at range from this minion wave, just wants to clear it all out. Jensen's just chilling. And Inspired's in that yeah, side He's brush. still in he there. Does, he doesn't know. JoJo's so. never going up there, though. He, he, is, he is avoiding the Inspired camp pretty well. Inspired. Going to be spotted out by that one. So JoJo's instincts are now proven correct from the Cloud9 point of view, as Inspired and Jensen are once again going to retreat back towards that Tier 1 turret. FlyQuest still have not claimed any turrets from C9 so far this game. C9 with the two that they managed to bring down there in the mid lane, but the outer turret's still standing in both those sides. And even though, you know, Renekton had a little bit of extra CS on Fudge, you know, Fudge with the scaling Gragas build, Seraphs has transformed, and Rod of Ages is up to seven stacks. So he is feeling quite good about this. You get a decent amount of AP in this. You get the extra survivability of the shield, so much extra sustain and health here. Um, the, the double scaling items build feels quite nice once you get past 20 uh, something minutes here. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, this 30 HP that was left on Dragon when Wipo actually takes it away, that changes the, the feeling of this game so much. Because yeah. if you have two Dragons to one right now, you're not feeling the pressure. But for Cloud9, this could potentially be a game losing fight if they do, in fact, fail to execute on it. So they are trying to play through mid, they're trying to mix it up a little bit. And it is kind of this 5v5 skirmish to get control of mid and then move down to the river and try to get Pryo towards that Dragon. We'll see if Cloud9 just starts it up immediately. Dragon spawning right now. Blabber and Fudge. Those are your two big go buttons on C9. FlyQuest trying to be careful about how they approach. Jojo Pion dropping down that seismic shove, forcing Gwipo to pop the slice early. Won't get the dice since he didn't find a target. Good wall. Weaver's wall to get rid of everybody else, and Blabber's gonna claim the Drake before FlyQuest can say anything about it. But the damage on Jojo is huge. Jensen ends up getting the kill, and now C9's gotta be careful. Berserker waiting in the tri brush. Gwipo doesn't wanna face check it. FlyQuest are just gonna march as five back up towards mid and back up towards the Baron. Yeah, they could even go to Baron. We'll see if they actually do have the confidence to start it up. They're at least gonna push for this tier one mid, so they're not gonna go for that. Baron. Cloud9, good job securing this, but a good job as well from Whippo getting it onto JoJo, taking him down. Cloud9 on the other side, we're trying to burst down and Inspire, but he had a nice flash over that Weaver's Wall to avoid the cast coming out there from Fudge that would have spelled his death. All right, FlyQuest getting some more money for themselves, getting some uh, 
tower gold as well on top of the kill gold. Let's take another look at how it started out because the wall was good from Jojo, but keep your eyes on Jojo back here as Whippo goes to the side. Nice little job there. He goes into the brush from the side uh, of the red wall here and then Surprise, Crocodile in the brush right behind you, lands the stun and deletes that mid laner. That's another one where it looks funny watching it with God mode where we can see yeah. everything. But if you watch that from fog, he doesn't see him going to that brush. He has right. no idea that he's right beside him because of intelligent pathing there from Whippo. And that's something that maybe we could actually see from them on the desk. They could highlight that. Because uh, those are those plays that are so subtle, but are really, really impressive. Knowing the limits of that vision, taking the maximum advantage of it, JoJo gets com completely caught off guard. Metal Gear Renekton completes his objective, and JoJo is now 0-3-0 and zero on the Kalia this game. Yeah, he's had a couple good placements with things like the walls, but it's definitely not the performance that you'd want to see. No, not at all. And I mean, if you get isolated and stunned up, it's actually so devastating because it sets up for the severing bolt from Huey so easily. And when yeah. you have that ISO damage, it is a huge amount of damage that can actually come from very far away. Let's check how much it is right now, just for, just for fun. Severing Bolt currently does 838 damage if you are isolated or locked down. And that's before not. item procs, runes, etc. He has yeah, airy, not pretty. Uh, he has items that can proc, so yeah. Um, look at Blabber's, or look at uh, Berserker's gold as well. Uh, he's, he's looking pretty rich still here on Cloud9. This... This is definitely something that they need to utilize. I mean, they have not gotten a good Callista fight since the lane stages. The lane stages, really good for them. They're able to get a nice lead, but they haven't been able to do much with here. And he does have a big bounty on his head. Meanwhile, another attempt here. Inspired looking for one of these side lane plays, but uh, Berserker's got a big bounty on his head too. So uh, by the same token, if FlyQuest can actually focus on him and get that kill, Lapper getting pretty aggro here, trying to contest for that Gromp. C9 gonna work together with him to steal away the enemy blue buff from FlyQuest, get that team-wide bonus for everybody as the four-man squad continues their invade of this blue side jungle for Fly. They'll steal away even the wolf cam next. Blabber going in for the ball breaker. Flash, they'll burst down Inspired. They'll take him out. And Berserker's in a rampage. C9 got a 5v4 for the next 35 seconds. Nicely done there by Cloud9. And now with the jungler dead, for sure they're gonna go to Baron. Inspired playing with fire. He was dancing so close while Jensen was taking the tier one top. He didn't need to be that close. Gets caught by the Q flash from Blabber. They're not even gonna start it up. I'm actually really surprised. I guess they're too worried about the AOE from Jensen and from Busio. But and that's and a lot to spend Jensen then. also just cleared the top tower while yeah. that pick was happening. So he pushed the wave all the way on top side up to secondary tower here for Jojo. So this this way getting very rich. Solo tower gold now for Jensen as well. Um, I mean, they, they open up the map even a lot more on that side too. It's just, I think it's just too dangerous to, to pin yourselves in t inside this Baron pit. But then the, the thing becomes that that was a wasted flash basically from Blabber. Like you got 300 gold, 300 gold is not worth it for your flash when soul is on the table here in a minute, right? Like that is actually problematic. You know, if you're not going to be able to get a follow-up objective, it's just a trade. It is really not worthwhile. That's why I keep complimenting FlyQuest for how calm they are in this game. You can see during that, even while the pick is happening, Jensen just keeps on split pushing top. He gets the objective. So, okay, yeah, they gave up the golden uh, in jungle, but they did get that outer yeah. tower. And now he's got two needlessly large rods. He's looking for his death cap. That uh, that three items power spike for Jensen for Huey is going to be massive. Berserker does have his terminus now though, so he does have his three items. Whippo going to get jumped on here with the very start, but Fudge is stunned up. Cast goes out, but it doesn't get much. Fudge at about half HP. Whippo's even lower. Sterix keeps him going. As Inspired still looking for the angle, a big kick ends up hitting three. Vulcan pop first as Jensen goes to the killing spree, and Flower's about to drop. Berserker tries to get away, but Jensen's taking their blood all over the floor. The as Berserker falls, Fudge tries to run, but the big man ain't going nowhere. Shut down over to Inspired, solo over to FlyQuest. Fight for FlyQuest. FlyQuest team fighting there was just beautiful, spacing out Berserker, not allowing him into the fight, not allowing him to get anything done whatsoever. This range advantage is just the biggest thing for FlyQuest. Massive. They're going to get all the kills, plus the soul, plus the Baron. That's, that's wrapping up the game right there. They just grabbed everything off the table, Flowers. Absolutely everything except 
JoJo, but they've already killed him three times hey, this game. So had that. They're not even too worried about that. Baron about to drop. C9 have been in a gold lead the entire game, but when the pendulum swings, it swings hard, and FlyQuest are now the ones calling the shots. All right, so while we're watching this, just remember that this way damage is going to be magnified by a completed death cap after this fight. Uh, ultimate knocks him out of the fight initially, and then they all turn on Whippo, but he survives on the Renekton uh, with his Derek's Gage. Yeah, Berserker is just having so much trouble actually getting in and autoing. As soon as he gets a target that he can hit, Whippo, Whippo starts backing off. The poke starts landing on him. There's Way poke being thrown at him. There's Busio poke being thrown Whee! at him. Senna steps forward as well, outranging him there. It's so difficult for him to actually make use of this Rage Blade, stack it up, get something done. FlyQuest just play that out so well, so patient through these minutes where Cloud9 had this big early game lead. Now you've got the range advantage with an Ocean Soul. So you have the sustain advantage there. Easy, easy to proc it. The Siege here, complemented by the Baron buff from FlyQuest, is gonna take its toll on mid lane and then just swap right up to top side where minions are coming down. And that kick from Inspired was just sick. Through multiple members there, so well placed. You know, disengaging the fight, buying time for that bailout to expire. Uh, FlyQuest just really playing towards their win conditions here, not getting rattled under pressure whatsoever. Yeah, it's it's something with Lee Sin where he's a much more flexible champion than everyone always just trying to insect people. But when you've got range advantage, peeling and, and using it straight forward are quite nice. And now FlyQuest rotate right on back over to Whippo where they have another minion wave at tower. Yeah, FlyQuest have really built this lead up now as they try to get the engage on the Whippo. He gets himself away for now with a hostile takeover. Blue House Berserker's already got the first kill on the Croc. Now they're gonna jump in for Busio. They'll look for him too. Inspire with a nice kickback on the JoJo, but it ain't gonna matter. Inspire drops next. C9 just got three, and they're about to make it four. Masu tries to kite him out, but Blabber and Berserker oh. are in hot pursuit. You wanted to see a Callista fight? There's your Callista fight. How much can they get, though? There's only the one cannon minion they could try to tank for. They're rushing down mid, so they at least want to try to get this inhibitor. Jensen could maybe actually snipe it out with a severing bolt or something. Kill that one minion would mean a lot here. Sever Protect the, the president! <laughs> they they protect him from the, <laughs> the fissure! Get it's, down, Mr. Cannon! <laughs> They're still going to be able to continue the push here, though. It's, ooh, good flash from Jensen. Death timers too short, obviously, to go for an end, but they will get an inhibitor for their troubles. We are getting a good game one, boys. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's the difference between getting that engaged and the, the all-in of this shorter range but high explosive damage team. Let's take a look at how they actually got it this time. So everybody's rotating back over to the minion wave that Whippo had up at tower. Then Blabber just goes for the closest person, ults Whippo while he's under tower, and then is able to get the Q to baby bump him back in for another tower shot. And this ulti from JoJo, locking them in, setting up for the hostile takeover from Vulcan, to me, that was really the defining moment of the fight. It makes it so there's no recourse for FlyQuest. You're locked in, you can't go forward into the hostile takeover, you can't escape over the Weaver's wall. That was really well positioned, really well executed. Cloud9 saw their moment, they immediately pounced on it. That's what it's gonna take for them to find a way back into this game. FlyQuest still with a gold lead, but it's so minuscule at this point, it pretty much does not matter. They've still got that soul. And the thing that I'm looking at most right now is how synchronized these clocks are in mm -hmm. the top corners of the screen. It's two minutes until Elder. It's 2.15 until Baron. This game's going to become very chaotic very soon. The soul is really, really powerful, but you know what doesn't really care about soul is Elder. <laughs> so if you can get that, everything else is kind of off the table. It would be pretty much lights out, I think, for sure. FlyQuest gets it because they have so many ways to apply it and so much poke. But if Cloud9 gets it, likewise, hey, could, yeah. be, could be tough. An execute for your burst damage seems nice as well. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see, though, because Inspired's going on a long trip into enemy Very territory. Fun, that Lee Sin is trying to get behind mid lane, but the minions are coming up soon. Yeah, if Inspired can Dojo get has an no angle, TP, by the big, way. But yeah, FlyQuest not going to get that angle they were looking for. Fudge pushed back by the presence of Inspired here, trying to create space for the team. Blabber and Fudge both going forward. Weaver's wall comes out, but it doesn't weave a whole lot. He got knocked off Blabber by the trying to get away. Yes, Whippo has managed to find Jojo, and he's looking to solo him out before the rest of the fight even starts. Dawning Shadow over the top. Jojo is low. They're going to grab him, and Jensen's taking a kill. FlyQuest is finding some health bars, and Inspired is chasing him down. Blabber's going to die next, and there goes Vulcan. Berserker will fight for his life here in the 
the jungle, but another severing bolt is gonna take him so close to death's door. Fudge gets jumped on, the bolt gets sidestepped. Fudge and Berserker both still staying alive for now, as it's oh! fired, gets picked off. Big play coming out from Fudge, but he'll pay for it with his life. Berserker's trying to just thin the wave, do whatever he can. It ain't gonna matter, the grasping maw pulls him down. We gotta get the replay of Whippo catching JoJo off the Talia wall. He was in the middle of the jungle between the team and where JoJo was trying to rotate from. Exactly. Look at this, look at this. He's in here waiting for him. Another surprise, Crocodile! That was so insanely well done. They knew JoJo had no TP. The only way he joins the team is with the ult. So he drops a pink ward, plays off vision, lays a trap, and finds him on the ulti. Fly quests have been inside JoJo's head, one step ahead of JoJo the entire game, constantly camping him. Elder. Whippo especially. Multiple assassinations on the Cloud9 mid laner. And Elder's under fire. Now it's a send everything in there. You know, Blabber just trying to try and get a steal. Q over when it gets low and hope for the best. Well, FlyQuest has to take this pretty slow because they're still waiting on Inspired to get back with the rest of the team and have their own smite there. That's going to give Cloud9 no time to get everybody in there as well. All right, FlyQuest, now they've got Inspired. Now they're ready to burn it a little bit faster if they need to. Elder at half HP. C9 still looking for an angle. Blabber has a blast cone ready to fly over the wall if he needs it, but now there's no more blast cone, so he's gonna have to use his vault breaker. Fudge at about one third HP, still looking on the approach here. There's a Renata ulti over the wall, but the dawning shadows when it respond. They've got the elder and they've got Jojo yet again. Jensen now dominating as FlyQuest continue the chase. Busio's ready to lock them down with the flows, and Berserker is executed with the power of the Drake. Blabber and Vulcan aren't long for this world, and FlyQuest are on the victory march. Busio goes up into the top lane just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure this one's all wrapped up. 40 seconds on the death timers, and only a big man with a barrel standing between FlyQuest and the Nexus. FlyQuest, such intelligent play, so calm through this game, and it's only Fudge that stands between them and a game one victory. He'll clear out the wave for now. Next wave's coming up. The barrel's cooking. It doesn't cook for long enough. It only gets one little minion. Now the teleport's showing up just to guarantee this does not stop here. Inspired keeping Fudge pushed all the way back into the fountain. Fly Quest weather the storm and come out on top in game one. Now, Inspired's Lee Sin didn't have the best scoreline on this team, but was so instrumental in so many of these Fly Quest plays. Yep. Jensen goes deathless in this game, playing the Huey mid, playing around the flash cooldowns. Absolutely impressive game one from FlyQuest. I also have to say, man, Whippo's game IQ is just off the charts. Like the intelligence he showed in this game of where to position. It's not mechanics, it's plays that you could press the buttons, but you wouldn't think to be in that spot at that time and right. execute it in that way. When he sneaks around the red buff brush to get Jojo off by that one dragon, when he's lying in wait for the Weaver's wall on a pink, knowing exactly the path that Jojo would have to take ulting back to the team, those are two such incredibly high IQ League of Legends plays that it's just beautiful to watch someone straight up outthink their opponents in that way. And he stole the Drake at 31 HP. <laughs> I say that kind of jokingly, but it also warped the way that the mid game played Get out. Get you yeah. a Whippo who can do it all. Yeah. Absolutely. But before we head back to the lounge, it's time to take a look at our LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T, voted on by chat. We're finishing, okay? Take a go. Can you go. I'm a king. Nice. Okay. I'm going to go. 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 Let's fight to fight by Chase, 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 Chase. I'm Starks, I'm Starks, I'm Starks. Nash or no? Just let them come back. Yeah, that's no idea. We should come back. Okay, okay, go Nash then. Does to FTP? She does. Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. We got Dokla here to break down one of the big fights in this game. And Dokla, this was kind of a display of how hard it is for Kalista to team fight in the late game here. Yeah, I mean, Kalista right now, I think, is what, 3 0, has a 1K bounty on her <laughs> head. And she's, you know, the main character for C9 here. And we're just going to take a look at in this fight how hard it is for him to play this whole scenario out. So C9 gets a good engage. They're able to hit Renekton, who's split off from the team here. But um, yeah, just so right here, Berserker. Yeah, Berserker is just caught between like just so much chaos in this fight. 
and just want to look at like how hard it is for him to play. Like he's autoing as much as he possibly can, but like the Renekton just won't die. He's too tanky. And Inspired hits a great kick here, gets a three-man kick. But um, after this, like, Kalissa's damage is just gone. Um, there's yeah. really nothing to do. They have a Huey from top here and a Karma here to just chase him. Yeah, and I like the, the choke, I know. like the range discrepancy because essentially you're gonna see this guy way back here kill the people way down here. Yeah. And whereas Berserker was free hitting the Renekton and didn't do anything. Yeah, and at this point the fight's lost. Like Kalissa just can't carry this fight anymore. A Mantra Q comes down, hits Kalissa. And um, this just goes to show the team comm difference. Even though C9 had an early game lead, it was just didn't really translate into anything really because the, just the range discrepancy is just too much. Yeah, it does bring me back to the question we had earlier in the lounge though, uh, of if C9 is back. <laughs> um, I don't know, like if they were back, they would have been able to capitalize on... Um, because so lead. we're now here. I'd say game one would be like, Probably this would be the data point. Uh, maybe, maybe back, maybe back, because they had some yeah. highlights, uh, like you know, just two v two killing. But um, they they needed to like transition that lead into objectives before they're actually back. So they're yeah. they're not there yet. So maybe they over the course of the best of five, they'll figure out the trajectory to get there. But right now they're they're in the maybe back territory. Yeah, I mean, question as well for the rest of the lounge. Hit us. The early priority that Cloud9 used the Callista for. Because mm -hmm. they got multiple solo kills, yet they were down three dragons to zero at one point. They turned it into six grubs, but then didn't use the grubs for anything. Do you think that was like a bad choice or just bad execution after they got the six grubs? First drag, first drag they couldn't do anything after because they literally just got the 2v2 kill base and then Inspired just instantly started it yeah, with his, just, mm -hmm. with his tempo, team. Yeah. Yeah. So the tempo couldn't really do much about that. And then that's when they actually just started losing fights around Drake. So it became harder for them for that. I mean, I'll say JoJo did get caught twice on like crucial moments yeah. where if he's in a better position, maybe he's going to be strong um, enough to like actually be a second carry threat in this game. But it just wasn't the case for majority of the game. Yeah, there was a second Drake fight that I think was really, really big for FlyQuest. Mm -hmm. Having Whippo be able to come in and kind of run through the entire team fight. Um, I, I do also think if you are going to prioritize like Grubs and Herald like that, um, maybe use your lanes assignments a little bit differently. Mm. Really, really try to like shove that advantage because if you can get all of those tier one outers down like super, super yeah. quickly and take over the map, then your setup is just so much better. And Kalista is so great if you are able to set up with her around objectives. Yeah, I would have liked to see them like swap the lanes around after um, they had six rubs, just send Kalista to top lane, find a swap timer, and Gragas to bot, because Gragas can clear the waves against um, Senna Karma, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be much harder for Renekton to, and they could have taken tower plates and got a bigger gold lead off that, so I think a bit of a macro error from C9, but let's see how they adapt. All right, well, Clauden has to win three of the next four. They've selected red side for game two, and Inspired made a big impact in game one with the Lee Sin kicks. Let's hear from him on his first split back in the LCS. In this split, uh, if I manage to do well with FlyQuest, I feel like everyone should uh, realize that I'm probably uh, like actually the best player of jungle like in, in the West because I managed to have very really good result in Europe playing with a uh, rookie team like it was back then Larsen and Finn when we were rookies then I go into EG and I have rookie AD carry and mid laner and I managed to win the split then I straight go into FlyQuest and I have rookie bot lane and I still managed to do good so I feel like it should be clear that why the team is doing good is, is me. I'm gonna look to flash on Rumble. Yeah. Just going very far up. Wait, wait, look, 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 look. Watch out, watch out, watch out! We got her. Yeah. They burst it out! Flyquists are back in the game! They find the huge play, their flash special mob from Inspired. The break last summer, I don't really know why it happened. I still really like the team, like especially Jojo. I think we, we really liked playing with each other. But during the offseason, we just got contacted by EG that we are all gonna be dropped and uh, we'll have to look for uh, different opportunity, different team. That was really shocking to me, so I just decided to take a split off because I didn't really have any good options that I felt like if I go to that team, I can actually uh, contest to, to win the whole series. I wasn't really surprised that he wasn't on our team. I think 
how do I say this in the nicest way possible? Yeah, I think some of the people making decisions on rosters are absolutely clueless. So, I found it pretty egregious that I wasn't on the team, but the fact that he wasn't is like, whoa, you guys are trolling. <laughs> and the number one trait that makes Inspired special is that he, he takes responsibility for everyone in the team in the most extreme way possible. And he will always make sure that everyone's playing the same game. And usually that's his vision. If players around him are playing poorly, like he will, he's relentless in making sure they actually step up and play well, and he will go through every situation and explain to them what he wants them to do. Which is something that like, this is what you hire coaches for, you know? That's like invaluable, and again, why he's so valuable to every team, and I think why every team that he plays with levels up so much. The break made me realize that I miss playing like so much, so after like two months of a break, I already wanted to play a little bit, but uh, I couldn't, I didn't, didn't have an opportunity, so yeah, I was a little bit bored. But it made me have way more motivation going into this split and playing again. Inspired and Jensen have just been combining so well throughout this game. Look at Freon, he's got Blitz and he's got Flash still available, but he's hiding this one out. The Flash from his is trying to connect the Sun. Yon Flash is backwards, but the resets are pouring in. I think the only thing that can stop us from winning is C9. <laughs> C9 is scary because of Jojo. Like I know, uh, like I played with him, I kind of made him. Right now, I can see like so the stuff that he learned from me, and he's applying it into his games while still using his talent that he always had. But right now, he seems like a very all-around player, and it's really annoying to play him. Having success in uh, these playoffs, I will be able to back up my words because right now I do believe I'm, I'm the best, but I think some people are still hesitating on confirming that. So if I win, everyone will have no doubt. Red Bull gives you wings. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires.